Hey guys, well, welcome back to the final wrap-up episode. So I decided what I'm going to do is we're going to do one year at a time. So this portion of the video will be the first year since I resigned. And we'll take a look at Forest Green and how they are doing. I have not looked at anything, have no idea. Oh my God, and they have been relegated. First year up, and they go down on 35 points, 10 wins, 5 draws, and 23 losses. Not happy with that. Man City on a roll, their fourth title in a row, fifth in six years. I honestly wasn't expecting that. I guess I'm not surprised, you know, AI, Forest Green, but wow. That's disappointing. Now the question is, how far do they fall? Do they go back to an equilibrium at League One? All right, so let's take a look at the transfers, first of all. So this year they sold 93 million worth of players, brought in 147. So let's just see who has gone out. Cleverly, our young uh, center back put out on loan again. Vitasevich went to Dynamo Dresden on a free end of contract. I wasn't going to re-sign him. And, and just to refresh your memory, I did sign players that I thought would be beneficial moving forward, whether it was youngsters that we could sign, sell for profit in two or three years' time, or veterans. We brought in those two wonder kids that were supposed to start this year, remember? They got rid of Aaron Collins. He goes to Levante for $15 million, and he plays 15 games, 14 of them off the bench, and does not score a single goal. And he only played a 6-5 after four consecutive years of seven-plus ratings. That's, that's disappointing. Sam Stirrup, uh, that was a young striker. He goes to Huddersfield for $78,000. Cherlinov went out on loan. Flynn Downs, they got rid of him. He goes to West Brom for up to $23 million. Uh, let's see, anybody else? These are all young guys. I recognize Swabby. Uh, Mads Bistrup, we had loaned him out last year. They sell him to Universidad de Chile, five and three quarter million. Alby Morgan for $77,000. Daniel Nomov, our reserve keeper, for four hundred and twenty-five thousand. To Brentford, he was valued at three and a half. I think that was a bad move. Sirkin goes to Man United for fifty-four million. He was definitely a great left back for us, and when they got value, and Kamara. Reserve key uh, striker. He goes to Cincinnati for three hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, let's just kind of look at some of their bigger signings. Fernando Luis from Corinthians for seventeen and a half. Twenty-two games off the bench. Four goals. Striker up top. I mean, he looks good. I'm not sure. A uh, oh, you know what? Hold on. This is one of the guys that I bought. Yes. Okay, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's one of the guys that I bought. Not quite four goals and four starts, but he didn't start. So I'm interested to see who the starting strikers were. I'm going to believe it's Nunez and the German guy, uh, the young German. Oh, no, Ids is still there. Ids is there. So Ids and, Ids and Nunez, I guess, continued up top. Interesting. Alex was the center back that we signed. So that was one of our signings. 33 starts. Not a great rating. 81% passing. Didn't score a goal. So that's disappointing. But that was those were the two young Brazilian wonder kids that I had signed, right? So, yeah, these guys were all on my watch. Brennan was a free. That was a left back. He played one cup game for, for the club. Cal Colin O'Neill from Fulham for one and a half million. 
I think this was after I left. So this was a new guy. A number 10. Five cup matches with one goal. All right. Uh, so these are all the new guys. So this is a guy from Atlanta for 10 million. Nicholas Acevedo. Now this is this was signed Acevedo. So they signed him and then sent him out on loan. Okay. All right. So he got two goals in nine matches. Didn't play a lot. And then he was loaned out and finished the season in League Un. So I kind of question that move. Here's a big signing from Watford for $13 million. Elias Cobot. 11 starts, one assist at left back. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Well, he did. He certainly didn't start a lot. Here's a huge signing, thirty-six million. Oliver Nitchum from Leicester, midfielder, thirty-eight starts, four goals, seven assists. Okay, that looks. But thirty-one years old. Okay, so they they went out and signed a uh, uh, you know middle-aged veteran. Oliver Skip, I recognize the name. I think I had him in another save. So he was another midfielder. 26 starts, one goal, four assists. Came out of the Tottenham system. I've had him on my team before. I just don't remember where. Gary Martin from Arsenal, 21 years old. Nine reserve appearances, another midfielder, and uh, twenty-five million for Hannibal Mejbri. So none of them played great, but interesting enough. Let's take a look at the club. So they hire Rudy Garcia, sixty-three years old from France, three and a half reputation. Not a bad, not a bad coach to be fair. Came out of. Uh, a year at Getafe, a year before that at AS Monaco. A uh, year before that, he was the French Nationals coach. Four years at Olympic Lyon. So they hired a guy with some history. But he comes in and gets relegated. Wow. Knocked out by Coventry in the FA Cup third round. And he had finished eighth in La Liga. Not, I don't know, not the results I would have expected. So Alex was made the captain. Scott Wharton still there as the vice captain. Uh, Hannibal Mesbury as our key player. And Colin O'Neill, our hot prospect. Taking a look at the senior squad. Nine goals led the way by Ids in 39 matches. Why did it do that? Five goals for Louise, five for Mitchell, five for Cherlinov, five for Nechum, Coffeehead, five. Where is, oh my God. He led the club with 19 goals last year, and he only had one reserve appearance. Ow. So who... Oh, they went to a 4-2-3-1 and played with a number 10. Ah, well. So they did go with Ids. And who was the other striker? Marinov. Marinov had three reserve appearances. Or three uh, off the bench. Finances are only okay, so we went from rich to okay, five stars to three stars. Still at Ashton Gate. Let's take a look at the schedule. And 22,648 in the early going. And in our last home game, so it looks like they sold out every, every match the whole season. Now, the new stadium is supposed to be done almost. Facilities, still at uh, 
Yeah, still at Aston Gate. Due to move into the 20,000 capacity Forest Green Stadium. And that'll be at the end of this calendar year. So about halfway through this season. So they'll actually take a reduction in people, in fans. All right, so Man City won, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea. Tottenham must have won the FA Cup, got into qualifying. Middlesbrough, Bournemouth, Forest, Green. And then going up are Bristol City, West Brom, and Brentford. Leicester got relegated last year. They're still down. Watford still down. Cardiff, Charlton, and Wigan going down to the next level. Where are, okay, Leeds finished roughly mid-table. All right, so there's the first year. Are you guys surprised? Let me know in the comments, and uh, we'll go ahead another year as, you know, and I want to see how long before they weed out the whole team, but I think next year going down to the championship will be interesting. The reduction in finances and are they going to dump players and dump salary? That'll be interesting to see. So we'll see you guys back here in another year in just a second. All right, we have come to the end of season two. Moving ahead, we are in June of 2028. So again, I have not looked at anything yet. So we're seeing this all together. And we finished sixth in the championship. Derby beat Swansea in the playoff, so we made the playoff. Forest Green lost to Derby 3-1 on aggregate, 3-1 in the uh, final match, so scoreless affair, first go-round. So we had a shot to go back up, and we finished, you know, finished well, I suppose. 23 wins, 80 points. Well clear of relegation, right? We were actually picked to finish third. Taking a look over here, Oliver Nitchum. Okay, that's a name we recognize. Craig Bradbury, do not recognize that name, are the main players. All right, let's jump into the transfers this year. So... Sold 212 million. I don't want to see this already. 64 million outlaid. Ids goes to Sheffield United for 40 million. So they get rid of our first wonder kid. Oh boy. 10 goals, 3 assists in the Premier League. Good profit, but man. That's brutal. That's brutal. Short-lived stay for Fernando Luiz, one of our young wonder kids from Brazil. We paid $17.5 million, and after one season, they sell him for $34.5 million. Six goals, 22 appearances uh, for back to Brazil, back to Corinthians, in fact. I wonder, I don't recall him having a buyback. Don't recall him having a buyback. So that's odd. Luan Gabriel goes off on a free. We paid 35000 for him. I was hoping that would be a guy that we could sell and maybe make some money, but they let him go on a free. Carraro goes to enter Miami for up to 900000 That was our one of our deep reserve center backs. Thomas Ojean. 5.75 million to Almeria. He's 31 now. We paid 8 million for him from Club Bruges. And, you know, he did a job for us. You know, he, he made, uh, what, 8 starts, 17 reserve appearances. You know, he, he played quite a bit. Only 14 appearances last year, so he fell out of favor, it looks like. Wasn't in the plans. Uh, Mejbri. Goes to Schalke for $15 million. That was a guy they bought last year for $25 million. 
So that was not a good bit of business by the new people. Arata Bayo goes out on loan, our former starting center back. Acevedo goes up to Leicester for $21 million. 29 years old currently. We paid eight for him, so that's some good business. They sent him out on loan this past season. Pavlovich, a loan fee. So our other one of our other starting center backs, loan fee of 170000 Corbo, another reserve center back, goes to Birmingham for half a million. La Quintana goes to... Sh you guys know how I feel as a lead span about Turkey. He goes off to Shaq. At least it was Shakhtar, not the other club. Seven million. We paid three. 32 appearances, all starts. And then five starts, 10 reserve appearances. My first year gone. He did have 35 start uh, appearances, 28 starts this last year. Played well, but uh, they... Barely make a profit on him. I'm not sure that was good business. Alex goes to... <laughs> so our other wonder kid, the new center back wonder kid, goes to Bayern Munich for 41 and a half. They almost double their money. I was thinking some of those guys might be... They might be uh, fatalities just due to having to cut payroll... Craig Mitchell goes to Sheffield United for forty-six and a half million. Wow. We paid three hundred and fifty thousand for him to get him from Derry City. That might be the signing of the save. Look how many games he started. He ended up with 126 matches in our last match and then played 23 more last year. Played well, four, uh, only one goal, actually three goals, four assists. Eh. But he goes off to Sheffield, back to the Premier League. So that's good. I think that's certainly his level. Sopich, 42,000. Kobit, 4.7 million. Don't recognize that name. So they had bought him last year for 10.7 and then sell him on for less than half. That's not very good business, especially when you're bleeding money to begin with. And the big outlay, 11 million, 20 million, eight. I mean, they spent some money. They spent some money on, I mean, 64 million. Do you think we may have, could have kept Alex or... Mitchell or Ids or, I mean, you know, I would have kept Ids, I think, for that. I don't know, especially depending on what positions these are. They they did switch to a winger tactic, and we were not strong at winger because we were going with the midfield four. So that's a winger. There's a striker, and they paid $20 million for him. That's half of Ids' value, not to mention uh, – Louise, you couldn't have kept one of those two guys. I think that would have been a wash for, you know, getting him. There's a right back, left back, another keeper, and another another striker. So, yeah, 35, 36 million. You could have kept Louise and had had a quality young striker. Instead, you sign some old guys. Boy, boy, boy. Oh, I only made favored personnel. Marinov made favored personnel in short order. Nunez was a icon in short order. Quite a few guys I'm surprised did not make it into this list. Uh, facilities, we have, they have moved into Forest Green Stadium. It's an all 20,000 all-seater. So let's take a look here. So they started the season well, November, uh, August, September, and home games 22-648. That was sellouts in the old stadium. Hit a rough skid in October, really stumbled in December, only four points taken, 
And let's see, this is Forest Green Stadium, 18650. There's okay, so 20,000. There was a sellout against Tottenham, so not selling out here. That's a sellout. Let's move to the end of the season. Sellout, not quite a sellout against Hull, and a sellout in our first leg against Derby. Oh, well, so Ponchettino is now the head coach. Oliver Skip got the captaincy. Scott Wharton still the vice captain. How many matches has he played the last two years? Not many. Not many. Just two matches. All right, so let's check the head coach history. So I left. Okay, so we just looked at the end. So Rudy Garcia was the French coach, correct? Yes. So that's who we saw at the end of last year. But he was not the first coach. So they brought in Spaceov. He lasted five months, sacked. Interim. Then they brought in Garcia. He stayed a year. Pryor was back as a uh, interim. And then they hired Pochettino. And he's been there for six months. How's he been doing? So let's see. We knew him in real life at Tottenham, right? And then he got sacked. Did they really finish? Did, oh, that was in uh, 16. Okay. So he got sacked there. And he went to Napoli, Torino, Espanol, and then Forest Green. Okay. Knocked out by Derby in the playoffs. Knocked out by Tottenham in the FA Cup third round. Isn't that the second year in a row that's happened? Strange. And let's see. Facilities. Yep, back at, so into Forest Green, the new stadium, which is good. They needed that. We've got basic youth recruitment and only adequate youth facilities, excellent training facilities. So at least some of that has carried over, but it doesn't look like they've spent any money to upgrade things any. So we still have Ida, Mitchell, Collins, Henderson, White. How's he doing, by the way? He's currently at Cincinnati still. That's where he went when he left us. And he's been putting in the games... I think we could have done so much better with him. How about Ida? He went to Cincinnati too, didn't he? Yes. On a free again. 17 and 34. So, you know, he's been scoring some goals. 11 and 14 this past year. And he's not that old. None of these guys. I mean, he's only 27. White's 26. Could you imagine if we could have kept those guys as our core? Morell, I forgot about him. He's 31. He's playing for Hearts. They had bought him from us for three million. I remember selling him. He's been solid for them. Nothing wrong. And then we've got Wharton McGinley. How's Rawson doing? So Rawson's now 31. We sold him to Seoul for 3.8, and he's been doing a job for them. McGinley, he's now 31. So, I mean, even, even our oldest guys would only be veterans right over their prime, maybe, coming into their prime. So we sold it. We loaned him to Shakhtar, and then they, he got sold to Barnsley. And he's been at Barnsley ever since. And then Palmer... We sold him to Stoke, and he's gone on to Ipswich. Wow, allowing 60-plus goals in the championship. That's uh, not quite where he was at where, when he was with us, is it? And on the bench, Connor O'Malley. And appearance-wise, 245 for McGinley, 266 for Collins. 
He ended up with 119 goals. 204. Oh, where's Bellotti? He's still at Forest Green. Okay. And he started 42 matches this year. Good. All right. So they're looking at Asta's moved inside. But he doesn't really play inside, does he? Okay. I'm not, not sure why. New keeper. Asta should be at a back. Skip. Mechum. Marinov's on a wing. Nunez on a wing. And Bradbury up top. Hmm. All right. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, sim out the last three years. I think we've seen the bulk of what we wanted to see. So we will come back three years hence. We'll see how far they have fallen. Maybe they get back to the Premier League. I don't know. What job would we go after? Bayern Munich? That would be the only one I think I would really consider. Maybe, I don't know, maybe one of the other Bundesliga jobs. Doesn't have to be the, I prefer the smaller ones. So maybe Bo Russia, Mock and Gladbach. Maybe that one. Oh, well. Guys, we'll be right back. Well, you'll be right back. I'll be back in a, probably a few hours. We'll see you for the final portion of the five-year wrap-up. All right, we have finished the three-year run. So let's, looks like there's a couple of job openings. Fulham, no, that, that's okay. And AZ Al Alkmaar, just a guess. Uh, let's see. Forest Green. Don't look. Don't look. All right. Here we go. So we got promoted. Stayed up two years. They got relegated the first year. Finished six. Remember that? Then they finished third. And then they won the league. So... Last year, or two years ago, they won the championship, finished first, automatic promotion. Let's see, Farron Rawson, record for most appearances, 270. And Henderson's still there with 199, highest among active players. The record for most career goals, 102 for Aaron Collins. Bjorn Marinov has 59. That's our youngster that we brought in. And he is the highest among active players. So let's. So we we've seen how they've done. Let's take a look at how they have done here. I suppose. All right. Well, so we need to go back. So we had we had back to back eighth place finishes. So that's where we left. First year they went down. So 27-28, we need to drop to the championship and check out the league table. And they finished six. That was the year that they lost in the playoffs, right? Yes, that was to Derby. So they were going to be back in the championship the following year. They finished third and, again, did not get promoted they did win 5-2 over Swansea on aggregate to advance to the final. And they lost 2-1 to one to Bristol City at Wembley. Oh, that's brutal. How odd that they lost to Bristol City when they shared the stadium with them for those few years, right? That's crazy. And then the following year... Automatic promotion, 28 wins, 9 draws, 9 defeats, 93 points. They won by 2 points over Bournemouth, 7 points clear of West Brom. And then the current season, we need to go back to the Premier, and they finished 16th, 11 points clear of relegation. Back-to-back -back wins. Three draws in their final five. So that's, you know, not quite reaching, you know, didn't reach 10 wins. But still, I mean, you know, that's, they did make it back to the premiere on their own. 
Interesting. All right, so let's go check them out now. So it's now Alex Neal from Scotland. Let's take a look at, uh, well, let's go overview. So they've got one championship now in the Sky Bet that they just won. The League One that I won back in the day, I think. Maybe, did we not win? Yeah, there we are. We finished first. So a 2024 runner-up, that was under me, a 2030 winner, 2029 third place, and 2022 third place. All right, head coaches. So I left. We got up through – Ponchettino was there last time we looked. So after I left, they had Spasov for half a year. Rudy Garcia came in for a year. Both of them were sacked. Ponchettino came in for about six months, and he left. Then they brought in Luis Nascimento for about two-thirds of a season. He was sacked. Michael Landrup came in and left almost two years in the role. And then another interim, and then Alex Neal. So where did he come from? So he he was with Wolves for just a few months, Celtic for a year, Reading for half a year, uh, year and a half, Hamilton Rangers, Cardiff. All right, interesting. So there's your coaching hires. I wonder where Ponchettino is. Ponchettino went to Bristol City. How crazy is that? So he left us, went back, went back to Tottenham for a, almost for a year almost and was fired again. Even after they won the Carabao Cup that year. Wow. Then went to Getafe and then he left that to come back to the Premier League with Bristol City. And Bristol City got relegated under his leadership. Crazy. All right, so there's our history. Let's take a look at the records. Most goals by players in a season. So 25-26 was our last year. 23 for Nunez. So Bradbury, Marinov had 20. Collins with 27, Ida 23, 22, Collins 26 and 24 under us. Most league goals, 25 by Collins. That record still stands. Most goals in a match. We had the four-goal match by Ryan Fisher. Nobody's caught that. That's the same record in a league match. Most assist, we had Gronley had 15, and they did have a player match that last season, Alexis Claude Maurice. Most shutouts was 23 by O'Malley. And we didn't have anybody really do great in the Premier. 19 and 17 for Woodman. Interesting. All right, let's check out uh, the best 11 of all time. So it's Woodman has taken over in goal. That's since I left. You've got Asta at right back, Rawson and Bellotti at center back, Sirkin at left back. Marinov. Marinov has moved into a midfield role from his striker position. Interesting. Alongside White, Mitchell, Coffey, and Collins, and Ida across the front. I'm surprised Nunez isn't there, but I don't think they used him very well. All right, let's take a look at the transfer history. So we need to go back three years. All right, that was the year that they sold IDs. Yes. All right, so we take a look at this year. This is the third year of the bill of uh, the pushing ahead so they've shipped out Oliver Skip uh, uh, Nunez goes back to River Plate for 11 million Bellotti to Bristol City for 20 and a half oh, I don't know I think that was a steal for for them 
disappointed in that. Uh, Nitchum, who they just brought in, goes off for 6.75. Berg for 375,000. Then the following year, see if we recognize any names. Elias Gerard goes to Stoke for a little over a half a million. He's the only one I recognize that year. Pavlovich goes out on loan. How old is he this year? 30? Wow. He plays 35 games in La Liga and can't play for Forest Green. Jeez. And Coffee goes to Zenit for almost 20 million. And Asta goes to Mainz for potentially 12 million. So they're starting to move off a lot of the 30-year-old players. All those, all those, you know, mid, you know, just in their peak years, 24, 25, 26, are now getting to be 30, 31. So they move the rest of them off. So let's see who is still here. And sort by this direction. So Woodman I recognize, but only because we looked, but he wasn't our guy. Pavlovich is out on loan. Henderson is still there, 31 years old. Let's take a look at him. We brought him for $21 million. He was the one we brought in because we got so upset at um, Floyd Dawes or something like that. I, I don't remember the guy's name off the top of my head. But let's see. So he played that one year for us, 31 starts, 24 starts, 29 starts. 39 starts two years in a row. So he was a, a permanent starter, 18 starts in the Premier League, four off the bench. Never performed up to the level he did with us, but uh, definitely got the job done. So Henderson is still there. Marinov is still there. He's only 24 at this point. He, he must have been 18 when we brought him in. Gee whiz. So we paid five and a quarter million for him. He had five starts, 15 reserve appearances in our season. Three relief appearances, 37 starts, 14 goals. That's not a bad season. It was in the championship. 45 starts, 12 goals in the championship. 20 goals in 38. And then 12 and 37 back in the Premier League. Maybe they should have played him that first year and they wouldn't have gotten relegated. That might have been an idea. And that is it. I do not recognize any of the other names. Taking a look at the staff. I don't remember. Dan Connor is still there. Angel Rangel, he was our Spanish coach. He's still there. They're still playing that 4-2-3-1. Taking a look at the facilities. Okay, what's the deal? So, oh, look at this. So they're evidently they're going back to the champ to the premier. So they're expanding their stadium by about nine almost ten thousand seats. I don't know when it started, but we're playing in West Brom Stadium, the Hawthorns, which is actually a pretty nice stadium. 38,000 seats. I don't know. I wonder how long that's been. So this is the last, this is the current year. So let's take a look here. Home game. That must have just taken place this offseason because we were still playing at Forest Green uh, here. So 20,017. So... All sellouts that year. I'm assuming, yep, Forest Green Stadium, 2017. So it looks like they sold out just about every match. This one was a little light against Sunderland. But yeah, it looks like mostly sellouts. So they were probably running 95% plus. So that's real good. In the process of a board takeover, and I am no longer favored personnel. I have, I didn't think you could fall off the list. Or maybe you have to reach icon status. 
Oh, that sucks. Come on, I got you guys to the Premier League. Nunez is our only... Marinov has made it to an icon status. Yeah, I don't know how I didn't get any better there, but whatever. Whatever. And I think that's it, guys. I don't think there's anything else to really look at. So they have up their training facilities to state-of-the-art. Youth facilities have improved to great. So that's good. Finances are at least up to secure. Hopefully they can start growing that value. I'd be interested to do another five years and see if they make any headway in the premiere, but we're not going to do that. So this one went a little long, but we kind of figured it would, uh, doing a five-year retrospective. Not many players left. That's a little sad, but it is what it is. Farron Rawson. He is still at Seoul, 34 years old. 11 starts this year. They could have an off off year with their calendar. So, but he's been starting the bulk of games, getting you know the odd goal, a few assists here and there, playing really well. So, probably one of my favorite players, um, Adam Ida is still at Cincinnati. Nobody ever brought him back to Europe to Europe, which is mind blowing to me. I mean, he was a 20 goal a season guy. He's been playing lights out. And he's only 30 years old. Dude, I would bring him back if I took over a new club. I would try to get him back in a heartbeat. And um is it was it Harvey White? Harvey White still at Cincinnati. He's twenty. He's only twenty nine. That is mind boggling. As many seasons as we played, he was. I think he was seventeen when we signed him that first year in League Two. Twenty seven goals and twenty assists in three years across three different leagues. That's insane. He was so good off of set pieces. Free kick taking. We don't know what it is. It's still got to be really good, right? Does it say any? Yeah. White made his senior debut in League Two for Forest Green, scored his first goal against Carlisle. He spent time on loan at Forest Green, making 168 appearances and scoring 37 goals. Lifted the League One trophy. And he has made 219 appearances for Cincinnati in the MLS. Probably, I don't know, those two guys, even though they weren't technically our players, I'd be hard, I would be hard pressed to think of anybody I liked better. Ids is valued at 58 million. I mean, he did a job for us. And Nunez at Cagliari. Again, he wasn't with us for very long, just the you know, really the one year that we signed him. And then they sold him back to River Plate and then Newcastle bought him. Interesting. So he made it back to England and now he's loaned out to Italy. Go figure. All right, guys. Well, I guess we can go take a look at my history. So one job. 2,520 days, nine awards, earned five and a quarter million dollars as a coach. I do vacation between all my games, so that's why that's there. Uh, bought 96 players for 124 million, sold 74 players for 100 million. Highest fee spent was 21 million on Ewan Henderson. Highest fee received was $26 million for Timothy Fosu Mensa. Where's he at? So we sold him to Gangzhou in China, and he's been there ever since. $5.5 million in fee, fees to agents and 13 players released. 358 matches, 189 won, 86 draws, 83 losses. 
661 goals for, 399 against, a plus 262 goal differential. We won 52% of our games, one league title, three promotions, and no relegations on my watch. Pretty successful save, I think. Well, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I hope you come back to the channel for FM21. Don't forget, we are starting off with Leeds United to see if we can keep them up in the Premier League, and that'll be a short one or two season save uh, for the beta release once that releases. Hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell so you do get the reminder when the video goes live. And guys, I appreciate it once again from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. Bye.